Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo here, New Day, another alchemy video. This time I'm going to be revisiting a Phyrexian tribal deck that I made when uh, Phyrexia All Will Be One first came out. I made a, a white-black kind of aggro deck trying to take advantage of Grafted Butcher, which is a really good uh, Phyrexian Lord. It wasn't good enough for Standard at the time, but as I've said before, alchemy is kind of a probably at a lower power level place, and there's actually a lot of alchemy cards that deal with Phyrexians, so I wanted to give this another shot. Um, so I guess let's just go over all the cards. So at the one drops, we've got Crawling Chorus. This is, this is kind of a weird deck in that it has a lot of toxic creatures, but it isn't just a toxic deck. So this just solid one drop. There are some... Uh, you sometimes sacrifice your creatures to Grafted Butcher to get it back, so having something that gives you two bodies is nice. Also, I've got three copies of Gix in my deck, so just having just alpha striking when you've got more creatures than your opponent is frequently advantageous. Only two Skrelves, but I have a love-hate relationship with this card. I, this deck doesn't have anything that's so important to protect. This is as much as anything just going to be a one-drop that attacks some of the time. Uh, two Progenitor Exarchs. I used to play more copies of this card when I was trying the second standard. I, st I think this is a good card, but it really hasn't caught on very much. Um, I'm going to try fewer copies and just try some other stuff this time. This is the first of the Alchemy cards, so March Towards Perfection. This looks like a pretty unimpressive card, or at least it did to me when I first read it, but it's actually pretty efficient. So when you cast it, you get a boon which is kind of like an untargetable pre-buff. So you, the next creature that you cast is going to enter the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter and death touch on it. So you're not targeting something, but like if your creature gets countered, you lose the boon effectively. Also, if, you know, plus one, plus one isn't enough to save your creature from the removal spell, you may wind up getting nothing from the boon. But I've got, you know... You can easily see how this is going to make Crawling Chorus much more threatening if it, instead of being a 1-1, it's going to be a 2-2 Death Touch. So, like, the boon part of the card, not that impressive, but it's it's only one mana. The other part of the card is you get to draft a card from the spellbook, and this spellbook actually has some pretty good cards in it. I mean, there are a few stinkers, but there are some very strong cards as well. I think Tumor Exarch is actually a pretty good card. Phyrexian Flesh Gorger obviously is strong. Phyrexian Gargantua, situational. I mean, if you had six mana, you might want to get it. Obliterator, strong, but might be kind of hard to cast in this deck some of the time. I mean, it's not impossible, but there are four planes in the deck. Uh, Phyrexian Rager, just, yeah, that'd be fine. Revoker, very situational. Toxic Abomination... Probably pretty bad, but I mean, if your opponent was on two life, I could see it. Vault Scourge is probably pretty bad. This thing is like very similar to Phyrexian Rager. You probably would never want to get that one. Archfiend of the Dross is a, a pretty real card. Probably wouldn't want to get this one or this one. This is like a sideboard card. Maybe, it, I don't think that... I mean, people sideboard this against Invasion of Alara sometimes, I think, in Standard, but I don't think that's really a big part of Alchemy. But anyway, the point is, you're going to wind up with a pretty good creature attached to this body a lot of the time, so it's just kind of upside. And you're also, it's not just like, you could say, well, why don't you just put Phyrexian Scrap Gorger, or Phyrexian, what's it called? Phyrexian Flesh Gorger in your deck instead. And it, I think the selection, actually, you're going to wind up with something better than just Phyrexian Flesh Gorger on average, in addition to getting this boon ability. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, the two drops, we've got Norn's Fletchling. Fe, Norn's Fetchling. This is another uh, alchemy card. So it's a two-mana one-one that gets you a basic planes, but if you have Corrupted instead, you just get a non-land card, so it just turns into a cantrip. So it's kind of like an Elvish Visionary. Uh, Four Scrolls Hives. This is obviously not an alchemy only card. This is one of the cards that I think kind of powers this deck up a lot. So we'll go for the throats for removal. Not very much removal in this deck. This is basically a pretty straight ahead aggro deck. 
it, so far it hasn't seemed in alchemy that there's that many creatures you really have to be able to kill. So I'm going to play on light on removal. Grafted Butcher, like I talked about, is kind of one of the impetuses behind this deck. Shieldred's Assimilator. This is an alchemy card that's seen a fair amount of play, both in alchemy and in historic. Uh, you know, it's a 3-1 menace that messes with your opponent's graveyard. I mean, you can do it to your graveyard. Usually what winds up happening with this is, like, if you're in a matchup where you need removal spells, you either start stealing one of your opponent's removal spells or you recycle your own, go for the throat. Some Elisil Cores. I found this to just be, a, like, a generally pretty efficient card in this style of deck. I used to have Bloated Processors in my deck, which gave you an ability to kind of sack your whole board when you wanted to go for an Elisil Core Kill. I don't have those anymore to try some of the Alchemy cards, so maybe this is going to be a little bit worse, but I've always been pretty happy with it. Uh, three Gixes. This is actually, like, another one of the reasons that I kind of like this deck. I, it's very If you get ahead and you've got Gix going, it's pretty easy to pull away with the game. And then three Shieldreds, it's a Phyrexian. Also, I have found that from playing some Alchemy, people do still have decks pretty heavily built around the One Ring. And Shieldred is a pretty good hate card for the One Ring. Looking at the lands, one of the things you get to do is you play with, you get to play with four copies of the Seed Core, which if you ever played White Green Toxic in Standard, you know, that was a payoff for being White Green Toxic, which you get to play with the Seed Core. Uh, this deck... It's not quite as good of a seed core deck, but you do it. It's sort of like a white black dual land for most of your cards. It doesn't. It's not literally all of your cards, but for most of them, and it makes stuff like Norn's Fletchling or Skrull's Hive or Crawling Chorus. You know, all of those cards get substantially improved. Only one Mirex. It is a source of Phyrexians, but I, I kind of found that when I was playing with. Four seed cores and a bunch of Mirexes, you wound up having a really hard time casting your non Phyrexian cards a lot of the time. Two of this new land, Captivating Crossroads. I think that this should be showing up in, you know, between two to four copies in almost any alchemy deck that's not monocolored. Two Restless Fortresses. I don't know if this card's worth playing or not, but I'm going to try it. Four Caves of Koilos and then a bunch of basic lands. I wanted to play a decent number of planes for Norn's, Fletch, Norn's Fetchling, but realistically you do, I think, want more black mana. And you certainly want more of your black mana not attached to Seed Core so that you can cast Go for the Throat. Although I guess you have to cast Skrull's Hive, so maybe it's somewhat balanced. But there are double black cards in the deck. Looking at the sideboard, we've got a couple cutdowns, a Duress. I've got four copies of Juggernaut Peddler, which is... I think arguably the best alchemy only card that's the the best alchemy only card from one of the alchemy expansions that's legal in alchemy, but it's not a Phyrexian. Uh, four annex sentries, Phyrexian. You know this this would obviously be if you're playing against a small creature deck of some variety. Two copies of Legion of Ash, Legions to Ashes. This is something I've learned from playing Alchemy. I've had people cast this card, and I haven't been playing with the One Ring, but I think the reason people play this card in Alchemy is because it is a removal spell that can get the One Ring off the board, which is pretty smart. Uh, and then two Virtue of Persistence. This would obviously be against like an aggressive small creature deck where you care about the life gain. I don't know why you're not... Oh, there. You're allowed to see Virtue of Persistence. All right, let's play some games. Look at these hives. I'm on the draw, so this is effectively a white black pathway for me. Opponents on the soldiers theme. Guess I'm gonna start on Skrull's Hive. This doesn't seem like a great matchup for Skrull's Hive. But if it's ever gonna be good. I need to have it in play early. I think I'm going to be pretty dependent on one of the shieldreds sticking in play. But not the assimilator. The assimilator is probably going to block this 2 one. There's a lot of small guys.
Boop. Like that. So they're going to flash this in as a 4 3, picking up the rest of the reinforcements. Or they're going to flash in a 2 2. This is a slaughter! <laughs> One wants from badly out of class. Right. Moving on. Do have a lot of sideboard cards for this type of matchup. So I yeah, obviously want cut downs, annex sentries, virtue of persistence. I don't know if I want legion. Legions to ashes is the name of the card. Skrull's hive was horrendous. We're taking all those out. I think I'm gonna cut at least one gix. This assimilator also seemed pretty bad. Like, there weren't cards... I wasn't going to want to get cards out of their graveyard, and they just had a lot of X1s, so it's horrible on defense. We're pretty all-in on drawing spells or the shielded living. I'm not going to attack into resolute reinforcements there. I don't know what this card does. The one soldier perpetually gets plus one, plus one in flying. The soldier card in your hand perpetually gets plus one, plus one in vigilance or make a soldier. And you can't just keep picking the same one. You have to alternate. I could have paid two life there to make it so they couldn't just ossify shoulder this turn, but they decided not to. Oh, they made a soldier in their hand bigger. Okay. is not what I was hoping to be doing with my fifth turn. They didn't even do anything with their men. I guess they maybe they have protect the negotiators. One thing that's uh, interesting about alchemy, at least to me, is that because there's no wandering emperor in the format. Shielder is like, it, it's way safer to just attack with it a lot of the time. Reprieve. Well, that's a cool card. It's top of the move. I should play that in some decks. It's not that cool of a card when Shielder is sitting in play. Reprieve is why they didn't spend their two mana in turn four. I want legions to ashes. They have that three mana enchantment. I still think it seems pretty expensive. That three mana enchantment didn't seem that impressive. At least that game. The three mana enchantment is a pretty poor substitute for wedding announcement.
negotiators. And protected. Of course, the trade is coming for us, I think. Yeah. I do have the grafted butcher. But converting crawling quarters into a 1 1 might is fine. Because they left all this mana untapped, I want to make sure I'm able to play two cells this turn. So that I don't get uh, completely shut down by Reprieve. going on. I got Staffa. If they want to eat my might, it means that the Gix is going to get through. Are we going to get to see the power of the March Torch Perfection? I'm just going to start with Crawling Chorus. Turn 3 might be March Torch Perfection, Norn's Fetchling, or maybe actually Shieldred's Assimilator. Maybe turn 2 should be Shieldred's Assimilator. You can't stop the Crawling Chorus. What are you even trying to do, opponent? Go for the throat in my Crawling Chorus. I mean, okay. I guess I'm going to put a go for the throat towards the top of my deck. The Norn's Fetchling doesn't screw around with the fact that the go for the throat is towards the top of my deck because it seeks so you don't shuffle. I want a Tumor Exarch. This thing is toxic. There are actually some other options for Phyrexian. cards in alchemy, but I think that the one I, I found were the ones I liked the best. It Gix's command. Ugh. I 
assume they're going to cast Gix's Command, and I'm going to go for the throat. Melissa. Oh, this march to perfection. Oh no, it is. It's fine. Like that. Eight. I'm gonna rage. You know, I often see a five-six shieldred with double death touch. But that's what we got going on here. So we got the wombo combo of Shieldred for Rex for Rexian Rager. They didn't even draw a card with the one ring. here. She's a non-creature card from it. They discard it or get a creature back from my graveyard. I think I would like to start by just seeing when I draw off kicks. his command I can take it and I could take another copy of the one ring oh, that's my only choice I'll choose that from everything. Does that stop toxic? Are they still considered to be dealt damage? Just scrub on the Taxium Protector even before this. Alright, this seems like the matchup that Legion to Ashes is for. Legion's two ashes. No matter how many times I say that, I'm still never gonna get the name right. I'm committed to it. This is a good Ellis Ill Core matchup. Probably not. All of my other creatures have like an immediate comes into play ability. Like except Gix, I guess. But Gix is. If you ever get ahead and you get like one turn of Gix, it generates a huge advantage. It can have effectively a come into play ability. If your opponent's tapped out and you get to attack them the turn you play Gix, it's like a come into play ability. These don't have Terra Sunder, so I'll go for the throat. Oh, they didn't have Terra Sunder, nice. Oh, they do have Glissa, though, so they're. I'm just going to blow up the spell's eye. I 
glad I didn't play the Gix. It would have been so much better last turn. Not a lot of good options there. Seems firmly on track to uh, lose the virtue of persistence. Touch every allies everywhere. Stand with us. Ties the ring bearer? Wow. I have bigger problems. My voice beckons to all worlds. This isn't going to trigger. Oh, it is going to trigger. Should have done that three combat. Should have done that a little bit more damage. I probably just wouldn't have even attacked. were going to work. I should have just ignored the Lenin Realm Breaker. I haven't done it yet, but I think that you can build a really good Rusko deck in this format. I don't know that it would look like my opponent's deck. I'm not feeling like... I guess they, they, they want the green because it gives them access to Terra Sunder, which is an answer to opposing one rings, which maybe that's smart.
White. I choose white. I feel like whatever I play here is going to die, which is why I played the Grafted Butcher instead of the Assimilator. And I was right. Holy life game land. Road, so I'm just going to exile this one from their graveyard. That I am willing to draw. Although... Okay, I'm going to need green mana. Is it a Phyrexian? I don't know. We'll choose green. Decided not to spend any mana there. Like I didn't I don't want to feed a Gix's command another Skrelv. I guess I could have brought a grafted butcher back. I wanted to leave go for the throat up in case they had a shieldred. Which they just have a really bad form of shieldred. I guess I got a card out of it. Maybe it's not that bad. It's pretty bad, though. Is this a Phyrexian? It was! I didn't need to put that on green. Why didn't you guys tell me? Alright, I don't want to draw this thing. I'm, I'm not going to give myself a blue mana. Come on, no Gix's command. This is a fairly awkward tap of land. much. fine. Probably going to play Shieldred next turn. I think that they're just doing like a domain deck the hard way. Like the, there's no triumphs, so they're just like, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna do it with basics. Is that what's going on here?
They are doing a domain deck. I guess this thing is still legal. That's going to be a pretty big problem. Maybe they'll miss. Whiff! Whiff! What am I rooting for? T ten lands here? Ten invasions. Yeah. That's enough of that. Right, for this matchup, I think I want Duress and Juggernaut Peddlers. Do I care about Skrell? Not really. It's arguably better than Crawling Chorus, but I don't think I care about either of them. I think I should have Legion to Ashes in my deck. Against Turd Migration, you just get them all. does hit so hard that maybe I'm supposed to be playing it on turn two. Sweeper. I don't even have green mana. It can't be good for them. There's no Wander Emperor in this format. I like that. Gonna be a mighty large sunfall. I think they would have prevented a lot more damage if they had gone after the graphic butcher. Lopers. I couldn't kill them that turn. I would have killed them with an untapped land because of the seed core plus the restless fortress. Is the sand good enough? It's pretty bad. I like the sand a lot better.
I think I'll play Juggernaut Peddler next turn. No, I could wait one more turn even. Things, the thing I'm hoping to hit with Juggernaut Peddler is one of the five mana sweepers. I guess they could be about to play Invasion of Zendikar, so maybe I'm going to regret that. I'm not going to regret it. Well, that went pretty well. Um, I was reasonably happy with how the deck played out. I'm a, I was a little bit dodgy on whether it was worth playing Shielders Assimilator on turn two a lot of the time over just Skrull's Hive. I'm not sure I was making that decision correctly. But other than that, I mean, this deck... I didn't feel like I was lacking for interaction, and I did feel like my cards were generally pretty impactful, which is, is good. I didn't, I don't think I drew this guy at all, except in the hand I mulliganed. So I, I don't, didn't gain any more insight in that. And also, Elisil Core was never relevant. Um, I was mulligan, or I was sideboarding it out in matchups where it was where my opponent's decks were just more controlling. Uh, because I, I think that this is a, a card you want if you're playing against, like, another creature deck. I guess I did play against that... the white-blue soldiers deck, and I just don't think I drew it in that matchup. I was pretty happy with my sideboard. I felt like I had good options in all the matchups I played, and I had a pretty diverse selection of matchups yeah this deck felt good i was gonna go through these are all of the phyrexian cards that are alchemy only so i've got this one in my deck this one i considered so it's a three three that when it's in your graveyard and you have corrupted you can exile it to get a nettle cyst this is a very confusing card to me because i don't even like i don't think my deck would take very much advantage of a nettle cyst and even if i was playing like a different toxic deck. I don't know that you would really take advantage of Nettle Cyst very well. So it's th that's a confusing card. This is in my deck. This card felt pretty good to me. Even though I did, I lost the one game because I misplayed with it, but it was fun. It was just overall solid card. This card, I think, is not good enough. So it's a 3 1 that you can unearth later on, and you get like. It kind of has double on Earth, right? I think this card, maybe you're not supposed to be planning to cast it and have it die. Like, you're supposed to discard it somehow, but that no, doesn't seem good enough. Uh, this card was obviously fine. This one... I think is just worse than Gix. Like, obviously, it it just works on its own. If you have an empty board and you have four mana, you can just play it, give it haste, and you get to seek a card immediately. And it's... You never get lands. The one thing I will say about Seek, though, I played a lot of different seek variants in alchemy and a lot of the time you actually just want to draw lands and the fact that you know you're not going to get a land is it's a disadvantage almost as often as it's an advantage i got this thing off of the spell book to march towards perfection this is not a good enough card to just put on your deck put in your deck on its own uh this is a blue card but this is a card that people actually used to play in historic in like white blue artifacts but it's not really a Phyrexian-themed card. This is kind of a Phyrexian-themed card, but it's just not good enough. This is like a draft uncommon. Uh, I think this is a new card. It's blue, which it's not It's not out of the question to just play like a, a three-color deck. You could easily warp your mana. You know, you're starting with the seed core to play a, a different Phyrexian. Like, I could just have Dark Slick Shores and Blue Painlands in my deck. 
I guess, which pain land would I have? I guess I wouldn't get any more pain lands cause if I was Asper, because it's just Caves of Koilos. But I could have Seacrum Cuss and Dark Slick Shores, but I think this card's just not good enough to play. This card has to do with oil counters, also not good enough. Yeah, so I think that I, I hit the good Phyrexians. This is a card that people... this is It has Phyrexian in its name. It doesn't have anything to do with Phyrexians. People used to play this in uh, Reanimator decks in Historic. It's pretty good in, in that, but it's not an appropriate card for this deck. So I guess I, I hit all of the Alchemy-only Phyrexians that I really want to consider. You could try Bloated Processor, which is a standard legal Phyrexian that I've tried in the past. I kind of liked just having more cheap cards. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this deck looks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.